As soon as I say Mario, everybody knows what I'm talking about. The Italian plumber who saves Princess Peach time and time again. Running through the field, jumping on top of Goombas and eating mushrooms along the way. But let's be honest, Mario games are weird and maybe it's because of all the things Mario eats, like the mushrooms. What kind of effects could these mushrooms have? And what about the super leaves for example? Is it possible that this is something to do with the strange adventures of Mario? Mario, previously known as Jumpman. He's the main protagonist of the Mario series and a mascot for Nintendo. He was created by Nintendo Shigeru Miyamoto and has appeared in over 200 games. He is considered by many to be the most famous character in video game history and is known to many as the face of video games. But let's take a look at the Mario games because they have something weird about them. Let's start with the first Mario game. One day the kingdom of the peaceful mushroom people was invaded by the Koopa, a tribe of turtles famous for their black magic. The quiet, peace-loving mushroom people were turned into mist, stones, bricks and even plants and the mushroom kingdom fell into ruin. Black magic, mushroom people, fighting turtles, it's all a bit weird, but why? Let's look at the possibilities of Mario and drugs, a lot of people have been making fun about this, but could it be true that Mario is on drugs during his adventures? Well let's start off with the things Mario eats, for example the red and white super mushrooms. The mushroom is the most basic power up in the Mario series and is also the most popular and most seen. These mushrooms were originally going to be called magic mushrooms, however they decided that this was not such a good idea after all, since magic mushrooms is the street name for the psychedelic mushroom, a type of hallucinogenic drug. Hmm, hallucinogenic mushrooms you say? Well that could answer a lot of questions, but what kind of mushroom would that super mushroom be? Well, after looking up some different kinds of mushrooms, I came across the perfect fit. Fly agaric mushrooms. Fly agaric mushrooms are known for their distinctive appearance, being bright red with white spots and for their hallucinogenic properties. They are usually dried and eaten, although they are not that common because of their unpleasant side effects. The strength of the mushroom varies intensely depending on where and when it's picked. Fly agarics are quite different from psychedelic or magic mushrooms, but the effects are very similar. The effects of fly agarics vary hugely among individuals, so we can only explain some of the common side effects. Typical experiences include a dreamlike state common to lucid dreaming, which can involve out of body experiences and enhanced clarity of the mind. Users experience a blurring of their senses like smelling words and tasting colors. A strong internal dialogue with the feeling of being able to talk yourself through personal issues. Blurred vision with dilated pupils and watery eyes as well as a runny nose. Involuntarily muscle twitching and trembling and increased sweating and saliva production. The effects usually last between 6 and 8 hours. So this could explain the things Mario sees and experiences in his adventures like flying and fighting turtles. But does he have any of the other symptoms? Talking yourself through personal issues could be one of the other symptoms Mario has, since he always finds a way to fight through all Bowser's horrors. He doesn't have a runny nose or watery pupils, but he certainly has dilated pupils. Some drugs like alcohol cause the pupils to constrict, while others like cocaine and LSD cause dilated pupils. Police officers know this and some use it as a way of checking if somebody used drugs. They generally look for dilated pupils to either less than 3mm or dilated to more than 6.5. Let me show you. The one on the right are human dilated pupils and the one on the left are Mario's eyes. You can clearly see that both pairs of eyes have huge pupils. So Mario has 2 out of 5 symptoms, but remember the effects can vary a lot. But is this the only possible drug that Mario uses? Well there's one other power up Mario uses that is related to drugs. The Super Leaf. In Super Mario Bros 3, when Mario equips the Super Leaf, Mario can fly and attack enemies with his tail. As with any other power up in Super Mario Bros 3, transforming into Raccoon Mario allows him to take an extra hit from an enemy. However, this is at the cost of the transformation. The drug that has very fitting effects and looks is Kratom. Kratom is a relatively new drug to the US and Europe. It has been used for many years in Asia as a medicine, a painkiller and a recreational drug. Kratom is the popular name for a tree and the drug comes from its leaves. In its native region, Kratom leaves are often chewed fresh. Dried leaves can also be chewed, but since they are a bit tough, most people prefer to crush them or powder them up so that they can swallow it. The effects of Kratom come on rather quickly and last between 5 and 7 hours, although high doses can last longer. 
The effects are usually nervousness, vomiting, nausea, sweating, itching, and most important, delusions, aggression, psychotic episodes, hallucinations, and paranoia. The delusions and hallucinations would explain why Mario can fly after eating this drug, and aggressive behavior would explain why he would attack the Koopas and the Goombas. The combination of these two drugs would create a world that's completely unreal. But as soon as Mario's hit, a part of the effects would disappear. Is there a reason why this happens? Well, Mario would be in his own little world and he can set the rules, so it's probably his own choice. And yes, people do strange things when using such drugs. I have an example. An 18-year-old man in Den Haag, the Netherlands, has died after jumping out of a window in his home while under the influence of hallucinogenic mushrooms. He thought that he could fly. So, yeah. Is Mario on drugs? Well, that's up to you. It explains a lot, but it also has some holes. One question before you leave. Shall I do weekly live streams on Twitch? I'll put a link to my Twitch on screen and in the description. Just tell me in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and check the videos on screen.